My name's Ricardo Lewis. I'm originally from North Carolina. Uh, I came to Illinois State in 1985, and I studied with Dr. Harold Greger from 1985 through 1987. And I took a number of classes with Dr. Greger because, of course, I love his teaching style, and I love the expertise and knowledge he brought to art. So I took his uh, modern art class. I took 19th century art, I believe, with him. I'm not 100% certain. It might have been an art history class. I took uh, watercolor, and he was my uh, master's thesis advisory committee. I mean, when I decided to go to graduate school, I mean, I didn't, we didn't have internet, of course, and I didn't know anything about graduate schools at all. I mean, I was motivated to go to graduate school by a mentor, Dr. Raymond Kuhn, and I knew I wanted to go within a 24 hours drive of uh, North Carolina, so I put uh, names of institutions in a hat within that 24 hours drive, and of course, Illinois was in that hat, and Illinois got drawn, and so I applied and was accepted, and got on a Greyhound bus, and landed on the, I guess, ISU's place. Footsteps. Growing up making art, and I was a realist at the time in North Carolina, and of course doing realism in the style of an Andrew Wyatt or a lot of the regional artists in North Carolina, barns and landscapes, and being able to accurately capture uh, nature, uh, trees, mountains, barns, you, you tend to, uh, you get a lot of uh, feedback from non-artists telling you how exceptional you are. And, you know, when you kind of grow up in that environment, <laughs> you believe it. And then arriving here at Illinois State University and knowing that um, I wanted to uh, explore art and do something different. So it was good that I ended at Illinois State with uh, Dr. Greger, uh, a total departure from landscape, even though Dr. Greger was a landscape artist. I didn't do landscape at all when I got here. Um, it was interesting what I could learn from him from a, a technique as well as history. Uh, because of all the history classes I took under Dr. Greger, I, I, I got a good understanding of um, the whys of what we do with art and, and from some of the intentions of making art during certain periods. And then, uh, and, and then when we study technique, of course, when you take watercolors with this class, I mean, you, you really understand, you know, watercolors. I also took his color theory class, too. So you understand how to uh, color dynamics and uh, learning how certain masters, you know, um, accomplish the things they do with their mediums. So we studied, you know, John Marin and Whistler with the watercolors and understanding color. I mean, it really gave me a lot of um, insight on what it was I was trying to do with art and as I learned, you know, the, the, the whys of what we do. And he was, he was one of the best um, professors when it came to helping you, I guess, criticizing your work. He was always known for our, um, the, the, the weeks that we had, you know, critiques. So critiques was always, you know, you line your work up out in the hallway. The entire class would participate, you know, you, you take a stroll down the hall and he would critique, you know, individuals. And he was very transparent in his feedback. So you had to have some very thick skin to be able to <laughs> manage, you know, those critiques. And so it was always a challenge to, to, to participate in the critiques because you want to meet the expectations, you know, of, Dr. Greger, as well as exceed those expectations. So my goal was always to, of course, meet the expectations, but then at some point you want to exceed them. And the only way you, you know you're exceeding his expectations is you don't hear feedback. He would just say, you got it. And so I had to, one of, one of the, the most fun I had in a critique session, we were in color theory, and we had to do a three-dimensional piece in color. And of course, you know, people have, different ways of approaching a, a challenge like that. And, you know, people had uh, three-dimensional pieces, two-dimensional pieces, 
and I believe I was the last person to be critiqued because I had a, um, a full-scale three-dimensional piece, which was actually the entire hallway of um, one of the floors in our Center for Visual Arts. And what I did was, I, did, I was very simple about it. I took the, 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 the fluorescent light fixtures on the ceiling and just covered them with um, colored um, tissue paper so that it created this, these bands of color around the hallway and then across the floor. And then to experience it, you walk down the hallway. So being the last person, we, we went and did everyone's critiques and listened to the feedback. And then, of course, we had to walk down the hall for, for, for my um, critique. And so we walked down the hall and, and you cannot get a sense of what people were experiencing in that particular piece. <laughs> it was more of an emotional thing as well as a visual thing. And I knew I accomplished it when um, Dr. Gregor just walked through the piece, kind of did his little mumble. He always give, make these mumble sounds. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and so he said, you got it. <laughs> and so I was so happy that I accomplished that. So uh, it, it was just very, very um, satisfying to know that when you're studying with someone with his stature that you can exceed his expectations. Of course, I had the opportunity to uh, witness the different styles of work that um, Dr. Greger produced. I mean, he did the uh, very gestural flatscapes he did the uh, the, pan the the more the uh, aerial views, I, I believe when he was doing some hot air balloon types of things, and then he did the uh, pieces when he was um, injured and then painting uh, Constitution Trail, and, and so of course a lot of brightly colored things. So one of the things that inspired me in my work, of course, having studied under him, was just that willingness to take risk and create works um, from where it looked like four or five different people were creating this work. So when I look at my entire um, you know, experience of making art, of going from landscape art, um, as a student I was doing more abstract work that looked more gestural with some color, a lot, actually a lot more color than I'm accustomed to in my master's thesis. And then upon graduation going back to more figurative work with more of a social consciousness narrative, which was something that was new to my work coming here to um, Illinois State University and the most recent work of course being from the Invisible Men series um, a lot of that inspiration from him where I learned to be a lot more loose a lot more gestural but then still maintaining a sense of um, I guess organicness about the creation of the work and still have the realism involved with it so people can make that connection and relate to it because uh, people, some people probably connect more to the realism when they can see something that they can understand what it is but then they have to pause and, and, and then they really interrogate themselves on what it is that they're seeing and, and I think that's one of the things that I learned from uh, Dr. Greger too is you see something and then you really reflect on what it is you're seeing. Uh, particularly when you're doing landscape, you know, from a panoramic perspective, you look at pieces, you concentrate on different focus points within a panora panorama, um, and then you try to reflect on what it is you're seeing. The same as with an aerial thing where you're taking a different perspective on looking at a landscape and what it is that you're looking at. And then, of course, using he's using bold colors in some of these aerial landscapes. And I'm like, wow, you know, how can I, you know, use more bolder colors in my work. And one of those things I learned with him in being a student of color is not a student of color, ethnic, but using color in my work is how can I use that color to um, you know, provoke emotions.